Okay, so this is going to be a little quick video on how to use the force table and what this means for those of you who are totally lost. So we basically got a table set up here, and this is a pulley, and then there's a hanger, as you can see here. There's our side view, this is the top view, um, and we're going to stack masses on this hanger. So uh, in the actual lab, it tells you to do specifics. Right now, I'm going to show you a few things just to sort of give you the basics. So I'm going to click here, and I'm going to oops, click here, and I'm going to move this pulley down here to zero, and I'm going to make sure it's turned on. So Pulley four is at zero degrees, and there's 50 grams on there. <clears throat> That's a weight of 50 times g. That's what shows up in the lab. Now I'm gonna put this one at 270 degrees, and just I'll put 500 grams. So I just click and drag, drop it right there. And notice when I do that, it pulls the ring all the way to this side, and I'll put 200 grams down here. Let's start. Let's let's get rid of that. Actually, let's uh, or let's do this. Let's put them both at 550 because the hanger is 50 grams. That's why it's 550. So I just want to get them to do the same. So now we have 550 grams pulling this way, or 0.55 kilograms, and 0.55 kilograms pulling this way. So obviously the ring is pulled so that this is a little peg that comes out of the top of the force table and it's the, r the ring is being pulled against it. So these are two forces pulling, I mean what you can think of is there's a force pulling this way and a force pulling down. Okay. What we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what would balance that force. So I'm going to enable pulley 3 here and say okay what do I have to do to pulley 3 in order to balance it? Um, Obviously, since these are at zero and 270 degrees, you can assume that it's going to be need. It's going to need to be right over here. And if you have a little bit of intuition, you would say it probably needs to be right like that. here. And then we're going to need to stack some masses on here so we can pull it back this way. Um, you would assume since this is 550 and this is 550, it's going to be at least that. So let's take a 500, and we're doing this experimentally right now. So we put 500. Oh, I didn't pull it all the way to the side. So let's take a little bit more. Oh, that was too much, right? So now we need to get rid of uh, one of these 500. So you click on this and get the little. Um, so now we'll say, okay, what about 200? Let's put 200 on there. And we're just kind of feeling around. Oh, and look how beautifully that worked. It pulled it just about to the center. So now we'll say this is pretty much balanced. And we have 750 grams at 135 degrees. That balances these two forces. Um, so that's just sort of the experimental with the pulleys. And then so that what they want to do is say, okay, let's take these. Uh, vectors and since this is four let's take the blue one and we'll set it right over here okay. we'll say okay this vector it's at 200 grams notice we've got 550 so I'm going to stretch this vector out and I'm watching up on the screen until it gets to 550 it's going to be pretty long Um, this one is going to need to be 550 purple. I'll go grab the purple vector, drag it, and go. drag this one down. It's going to be 550. So it gets to 550. That's where he's saying plus or minus three grams, and you can get it pretty close if you will. Uh, especially for this experimental stuff. And then, so the balancing vector is going to be 750. So let's take the green one, let's drag it. And we'll 
drag it out to 750. This is really long. 750. Look this one. This one is the longest first day experiment I've ever completed. So these two vectors are the ones that are at were originally acting on them. So if we wanted to add these two vectors, you add them head to toe. So we want to take the toe of this purple one and bring it over here and set it on top of the head of that blue one. So these two vectors together, when we add these together, we get what's called an equilibrium, or excuse me, a resultant vector. I'm going to use the uh, orange arrow as my resultant vector for the time being. Oops. And so now I'm just going to do this experimentally. And I'm going to drag it here. And I'll drag it to where those two added together. And if you notice, you're probably picking up on it already, that this orange vector, this is our resultant. So when we add these two together, it's like putting a single force that's this much at this angle. The green one the balancing force is what we call the equilibrium. And if you notice, this one's at about 315 degrees, which is 180 degrees from 135. You'll probably also know that it's about equal magnitude, more or less, right? Um, and so we get the main idea of vector components, that these two components, when added all their x's together and all their y's together we got this resultant and then the equilibrium is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction so that uh, it balances that out and that's where we get these vector components so really this is just you're just rearranging different types of things to uh, figure out the different components if we wanted to look at let's just uh, let's get rid of these It. So we just have one component. So I'll show you one of those. I'm slick here. And if I wanted to see the components of this, I can come over here and click on the Show Components, and it will show me that these two vectors, this x component and this y component, give me this resultant. If I want to know the equilibrium, it's going to be equal in magnitude, same length, but opposite in direction. Um, so that's a little bit of an overview on how these vector components work, how the force table lab works, and hopefully that helps you a little bit.